Hello, I'm Dr. Richard Vuitton from south of France. Um, I'm an ENT surgeon and I invented uh, about uh, 13 years ago the tier that I use now since uh, that time with about uh, 25,000 people treated in that chair. So I'm uh, upon to speak about uh, canalids disorders and mechanical assistance management. In France, uh, we have about 300,000 DZ patients that have consultation weekly for um, management of positional vertigo or uh, dizziness. And uh, most of the time, in uh, that cases, the patient describes some uh, disabling sensation while moving the head or in some head position. Of course, only patients with uh, uh, canalis disorders should have some therapeutic maneuvers. So, with the chair, we will be able to make some diagnosis and therapeutic maneuvers. Never forget that about 1% of the positional vertigo are not benign, but could be from central origin, and about 0.1% uh, could be linked to cerebral tumor. So, if the patient presents some unusual clinical findings as neurological impairment, even if it is very little, or unusual headache, don't hesitate to perform MRI. Some uh, little reminds of about uh, anatomy that the osseous canal is quite large, about one millimeter wide uh, diameters, um, and about to uh, 20 millimeters long for a posterior canal and about 15 millimeters long for a lateral canal. Uh, inside the osseous canal is the perilymphatic liquid that contains the membranous canal, which contains the, endo, uh, the endolymphatic liquid. This membranous canal is about 150, millimeter, 150 micrometer size uh, diameter. And uh, the autoconies uh, that could move into these canals are about 3.5 to 30 micrometer size. Here to explain that some of the particles that are floating in the utricle uh, could, uh, could go uh, directly in the lateral canal within uh, the position of the head during the night because the sedimentation will permit these particles to go uh, from a trickle to the lateral canal directly thanks to uh, sedimentation, thanks to gravity. You see here, the common cross is much more difficult to, uh, to reach for these particles because it is in up position. So, it's logical that these particles could go uh, easily in the lateral canal, but not easily in the posterior canal. But here you see the very different size of particles that are... Uh, here it is um, a straight uh, of uh, 10 micrometer size that shown that here you have about 30 micrometer size particle and here about, here about 3 or 4 micrometer size particle. So you can imagine that this different size could give some different symptoms and that big particles will move uh, with higher speeds than little particles. It's sometimes difficult to make positional vertigo diagnosis and despite uh, clinical uh, typical clinical history, uh, it is difficult to show uh, the involved canal. So it's really important to get a complete history from the beginning. Usually the patient uh, describes uh, trouble while, when lying on the back, sometimes just on one side, but most of the time on both sides. It, it will uh, indicate that uh, it's uh, certainly a lateral canal involvement, that is the only uh, canal that, is, uh, uh, that have an expression on both sides in the bed. If the patient is only uh, impaired on one side, it could be only a posterior canal involvement. Usually, the patient 
will be disabled when standing up uh, out of the bed in the morning and while looking upward and downward and during head rotation in the horizontal plane. Usually uh, the patient has some uh, nausea but not always and sometimes the patient will present uh, some unsteadiness, some isolated unsteadiness or drunkness sensation while walking. Sometimes you can find some isolated trouble vision or isolated nausea that usually improve during the day. Of course, you will make a clinical and neurological examination, seriously of course, because uh, if you will find some clinical impairment of the neur neurological system, you, you will make some uh, MRI to avoid to uh, to miss uh, central disorder. Which is, which is very important is to make some diagnostic maneuvers with both eyes hided because uh, the lateral canal uh, nystagmus, which is a horizontal one, is very easy uh, to um, inhibit by fixation. So if one eye is open, you will not see the nystagmus if it is a little one. The best way is to uh, see both eyes hide it with infrared goggles and a big screen to make uh, easy the complete analysis of lateral uh, of the horizontal component, the vertical component, and the torsional component because it is uh, really frequent to have a multi-canal uh, involvement presentation. Here is a paper that I like to present that was published in 2003. It is a, a mathematical model that, that shown that about 62 autoconies, about uh, 10 micrometer size, were necessary to uh, reproduce the same symptoms as the classic posterior BPPV. So uh, the question is what happened between 1 and 62 particles? We made, our, um, we made with a, a, a laboratory specialized in fluid mechanics uh, two years ago um, a study. This is a new mathematical model not yet published that has shown um, that uh, the particles uh, were very uh, have a different speed to, to progress in the canal thanks to gravity, depending from the size of the canal of the particles. Uh, the study uh, concerned some uh, uh, canals that was put in straight position vertical and uh, about 20 millimeters long and uh, we uh, reproduce the time to the particle to go from cupola to the exit of the canal and it takes about 30 minutes for a free particle of 5 micrometers to make the whole trip from cupola to exit of the canal while the same trip it needs about 70 minutes for uh, 3.5 sized particles and 30 seconds for a uh, 30 micrometer sized particle. So it's very important to consider that to uh, better understand uh, our failures. This is a theory that I like to present since about two years. Uh, the iceberg theory um, is that since about 30 years that we describe the BPPV, we consider only the emergent part of the canalids disorders. In this group, you see it is the BPPV group and uh, it concerns some displacement of big particles. Most of the time the big particles are in the posterior canal and it concerns about 90% of the BPPV. Uh, these particles could go also of course in the lateral canal but uh, about only 9% of the BPPV are in the lateral canal. This could be uh, linked to the fact that the lateral canal is very easy to clear from the bigger particles during the night simply by head rotation in the bed during the night. We found only 1% of anterior canal involvement in this group. The emergent part of the iceberg could be essentially 
unsteadiness and abnormal perception of the motion. This is linked to very thin particles that have moved, essentially in the lateral canal, and could represent more than 50% of the balance disorders. This is explained by the migrations, certainly during the night with long-lasting position that permit the particles to sedimentate very far in the lateral canal uh, in, uh, in positions that facilitate this migration. We could separate the canalist disorders in two groups. The first group with the big particles is a BPPV group. And the second group is the APMP group that concerns the very thin particles with abnormal perception of the motion and the position of the head. In the second group, the sensor of the lateral canal becomes sensitive to the vertical position because the weight of the column of liquid is increasing because of the presence of the particles uh, in the canal. These particles will give some weight to the liquid, but uh, will not uh, stimulate the cupula sans their movement. It is just the presence of these particles which will increase the weight of the canal and give the weight an abnormal density. So when the uh, lateral canal will be verticalized, it will, it will be uh, sensitive to this position. And if the cupula is down the floor, like the patient is looking downward, then the cupula will be pushed and the, uh, the patient will present an abnormal stimulation of this cupula. If the patient is looking upward, the, uh, the colon of liquid will tend to go down and pull the cupula. So the patient will also feel some disabling sensation while looking upward. And during the head rotation, the weight of the colon is asymmetric, so the stimulation will be asymmetric and the patient will be uh, very disabled during head movement in the horizontal plane. So the canalis disorders treatment will be particularly positioning maneuvers, thanks to gravity or with deceleration or acceleration, and adapted to symptom and to the means. For posterior canal, we used to perform uh, a play maneuver and cement maneuver, and some uh, some team uh, used to train the patient to make some bander uh, exercises. Uh, typically in a very uh, frequent relapse uh, patient. On the chair, we could perform some barbecue maneuver for posterior canal, which is a maneuver that permits to make a flip rotation in the posterior plane. And we could also make some TV maneuver, which is a maneuver uh, made only with a chair with some multi-shock maneuver. For the lateral canal, we can observe that there is a lot of maneuvers described, certainly because it is the most difficult canal, canal to treat, and uh, the maneuvers are very um, various and could be more efficient while making some uh, fast movement and some transmission of kinetic energy. Of course, in that case, the transmission of kinetic energy is very helpful, so the dynamic barbecue maneuvers and TLV maneuvers that are made on the chair are more efficient thanks to uh, the transmission of this kinetic energy that permits the particles to go faster to the exit of the canal. We can also perform the entire canal treatment by Lorrain maneuver, which is a maneuver that is performed uh, with uh, head down in the Dixol bike position opposite side. Uh, the head is put in uh, the most down position uh, that permits to the particles to go from cupula to the most, uh, the deepest point of the canal in the uh, uh, down position. Then the patient will be put upright by a section of 30 degrees with each step after 30, degree, 30 seconds uh, waiting. The treatment of the canalolithiasis uh, is a physiotherapic management that could be performed thanks to gravity or with hypergravity um, transmission. Uh, 
it is very important to free each canal involved because uh, if you miss uh, lateral canal involvement in the same time that uh, posterior canal involvement, you will not have any more positional vertigo, but the patient will keep some unsteadiness and dizziness, sometimes very disabling. We made a study about three years ago that concerns about 500 20 subjects. This study included some patients that presented some dizziness without any positional vertigo. The average of age was 58 and the history began with average of 40 days. Now uh, I am presenting the case of uh, 83 years old patient that have some uh, positional disabling sensation and is enabling collapse is through since six months without falling forward. He describes some positional disabling sensation for many years. You see here in the left exalt pike position, he don't present any positional nystagmus. And when we put this patient on uh, the right dexal pike position, it appears uh, left beating horizontal nystagmus that seems to uh, to be linked to a lateral canal ityasis, apogeotropic form. Now we will uh, perform some whole tests, which is the most performant uh, diagnostic uh, procedure to uh, to make uh, to, to be sure about the location of the particles in the lateral canal. You see here on the left side the nystagmus seized and he uh, will reverse to a bit towards the right side but very slowly. So you see now it's beating towards the right side very few and to confirm we will put the patient again toward the right side and you see now it is beating left clearly so now thanks to the eval slow you can confirm that it is a left lateral canal apogeotropic canalitiasis so now we are going to perform the TRV maneuver which is a maneuver that uh, it's a combination of multi-shocks uh, to transmit some kinetic energy within uh, 270 degrees rotation towards the safe side. So this is an old protocol that uh, uh, was made with six shocks at each series. Now uh, we perform 12 shocks at each series and you see uh, that we have um, an ability to block the chair at each 45 degrees to permit to make some uh, steps during the rotation towards the safe side. So we will perform uh, this series within 45 degrees rotation toward the safe side at each step. So you see it's quite easy to perform even if the patient is obese or very old and it is really well tolerated. So you see here the patient is put in 45 degrees down position uh, to be shocked on a shock absorber. It permits uh, to transmit only some deceleration and no shocks to the head because the head has some uh, absorbing foam um, on the, uh, around the head and uh, there is a uh, hydraulic shock absorber that permits to um, make absorbing the deceleration. So uh, the patient don't feel some brisk shocks, it just feel deceleration. So it permits to transmit quite pure energy to accelerate the particles and to permit the particles to go towards the exit of the canal. So you see here it is uh, the fourth steps 
Now we are going to make one more steps and uh, you, now the, the new models of Tiovichir permits to make these uh, shocks at the horizontal plane. It permits uh, for the patient to have a maximum of uh, comfort. Now we have one more session with this protocol with the patient 45 degrees head down towards the safe side and you have to be aware that now with the new protocol uh, we make one more session with the head completely down the floor, nose down. It permits to um, better clean the end of the canal to be sure that the end of the of the lateral canal is really vertical towards a trickle to permit all the particles to go out of the canal. So after having uh, finished uh, the last series of shocks, the patient stays in that position for about 30 seconds and then the patient is put in upright position and we will observe how the patient uh, feel after having this multi-series shocks. Now the patient is put upright and you will see the results. You will see that uh, it is quite easy to freeze the patient within about 15 seconds around. We unlock the harness and we put the Google out of the faces and now the patient is freed. We say that the, we, we saw that the patient is quite a bit tired by the maneuvers but uh, he recover rapidly uh, some smiles and is happy that uh, the session is ending and uh, now I'm trying to see if there is some results that could be shown just right now. I ask the patient to make some head movement and to ask him if he feels better. Now we say it's good, he feels better. And I will ask the patient to pick something up from the floor. He don't want to because he, he fears about falling, but uh, I ask him, I insist to make him picking something up from the floor. And now we will see that he don't feel any disabling sensation or falling sensation. It's completely cured. So it permits to cure symptoms that was six months long. The results of our study shown uh, that about 9 or 10 patients were completely free of symptoms after just one session and most of the time in nearly 70% uh, the patient present a aporotropic form of canalitis disorders of evolving, evolving the lateral canal. Aporotropic form didn't need more sessions than a geotropic form and about 5% of our patients were bilateral. This uh, bilateral involvement need about 4 sessions in average. About 2 to 3% of our patients were not improved by this treatment and probably have some abnormality uh, of the anatomy of the canal of some particles completely blocked in the canal. In conclusion, transmission of kinetic energy seems to improve the efficiency of the therapeutic maneuver and we have to be aware that uh, uh, some persistent unsteadiness or drunkness sensation could be linked to uh, very little particles that could be still present in the canal after posterior canal management. Often so-called posterior canal uh, post-BPPV ortholytic syndrome could be simply uh, linked to lateral canal ectasis misdiagnosed with very small uh, little particles. So it could be successfully uh, treated by these new maneuvers uh, thanks to transmission of kinetic energy. 
In conclusion, we have the same goal with several ways to reach this endpoint, but uh, this um, study permits to have a bit, the best physiopathology understanding and uh, will certainly uh, make evolute the diagnosis and therapeutic management. Research way is open.